Um, hi, my name is Derek and I'm your instructor for this class. Um, in this video, uh, I want to go over some of the basics of using uh, your class dev box that you should have set up at this point. Um, so using the commands and talk a little bit about the file system. So um, we'll start by looking at these. Um, so I want to talk about the, the, the shared file system that's available. So this is how you can move files in and out of your virtual dev box. Um, and then uh, some other things, some, so maybe a few things about command line usage examples and things like that. So um, I've, I've got my running uh, class dev box up here. Um, so th the first thing I wanted to talk about um, is the, the shared file folder that's available. So if you look at the, the file browser, so this is the file browser here um, that you should have on your favorite if you didn't remove it. So you'll find in your home directory that there's a directory called repos, okay? And, and you'll see this little like lock icon on it, but you'll probably also see it here. This means that it was actually mounted, okay? And you can click on there, so, or um, let me go back to home. So you can go to home and look in repos. And inside of there, there's a directory called COSC2336-DS-ALG, okay? Which is the same name as the repository directory that we created. If you go in there, you'll see that you have the same files that you saw on your host machine when you cloned the repository. So in fact, this directory here is a shared uh, directory with your host machine. So any file you change or put in here, you can see on your host uh, and vice versa. If you put a file on your host into your um, repository directory, um, you'll be able to see it here then inside of your virtual box, okay? So, you know, if I um, created a file, um, uh, actually, let me, let me use a different editor. Let's, let's say I used Emacs and I created a file here in this uh, directory called, um, I don't know, test.txt. So, so again, the directory is off your home directory called COS. So, so any file you put in here gets shared between your host and your guest. So. So, so if I, I, you know, I've got a file now called test.txt right here, right? So now if you were to go look on your host machine, and, and I'm probably not going to show this here, so I kind of show it off screen, but if you were to go look in your host machine into your repository directory, you'd now see that test.txt file, and you could open it up and do stuff that you wanted to. And, and also, likewise, so, so again, kind of off screen here, I'm going to move or copy a file into my repository directory, Let's say I want to copy my experiment1.com file here to my repository directory. So I just copied it over in there. So now if I reload here, um, you'll see that now there's this experiment1.com file, right? Okay. So anyway, th this shared folder you can use to, to move files back and forth between your guest um, and your um, host operating system computer, all right? Um, so um, I already showed in the previous video kind of adding some things to your um, uh, to your menu bar here, like like all the editors and stuff. I've got I've got my Atom editor now here as well as well as all the other editors. Um, let me just quickly show you one or two other things about Linux Desktop. So if if you want to play around with your settings, you know, tweak some things to make things better, uh, click over here uh, on the top right hand side. <coughs> that's that's how you'll access your settings. So, uh, for example, I often like to give myself a little bit more room. So I like to change my icon sizes, make them like maybe about half the size, 24. Um, and maybe you can change your position if you want to have it on the bottom or uh, on the right, for example. Um, and I often like to have the auto hide on so that if I need to or want to, you know, if I put something over there, the that dock will go away um, if I need that screen space. So, um, I don't know. Just another quick one. I mean, I often do turn off my screen saver so I, um, because I, I want my host machine to, to handle the screen saver, and I just want this my, my virtual machine desktop to always be on and not go into a screen saver mode where I have to enter in a password to get back into it. So, uh, but there, you can you can explore that. Okay. Another quick thing I'll mention um, there. Um, 
the, the software center or the software app store um, has been installed. So if you search for software, um, uh, if you bring up the activity and search for software, you should see it looks kind of like a briefcase. This is a, an app store uh, like, um, you know, like you might be used to from Apple or um, Android or something like that, you know. So I mostly mention this because, you know, um, you might want to learn a little bit about using Linux. There's lots of really good free tools, especially for software development and, and scientific programming and, and applications like that. So you can, you can um, look through there and, and find lots of different applications. So, um, so anyway, so another, another kind of real quick configuration I usually like to do, I, I usually like my file browsers to show me um, um, a list view instead of an icon view. And then I also like this to be, oops, um, um, smaller size. So, uh, oh, there it is. Okay, so yeah, there I can make it a little bit smaller. So, um, so yeah, anyway, that's, that's the file browser. Um, so I did those. Um, I showed in the previous video kind of getting a terminal and getting it over here on your dock. Um, let me just show that again in case you didn't watch that video. So again, if you click on your activities, uh, oh, by the way, I mean, you can get like a full list of all your applications by clicking down here, um, um, but uh, that can be tough to, 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 to find what you're looking for um, if you look through there. So yeah, I often use just a search. So, so again, if, if you bring up and search for terminal, um, you can right click on that and, and um, add that to your favorites. So. Um, so I encourage you maybe to learn the basics of using the, the Unix command line. Um, I've got a quick kind of reference. So if, if you go to um, our repository under docs, uh, I've got a couple of files in there by default. There might be more by the time you see this video, um, but including this little dev box command reference PDF. Okay, so I recommend maybe kind of going through uh, the software carpentry tutorial or, or maybe Googling for, uh, you know, using the Unix shell. If, if you want to find, uh, uh, there's lots of tutorials. You might find one that you like better, right? So, but you might want to learn kind of these basics here, uh, at least. So I gave kind of a list of some of the most basics. Um, like, for example, LS. So, and PWD. PWD stands for print working directory. So by default, when you open a terminal, you start in your home directory. So I'm, uh, you'll be logged in as a Vagrant user. So, so the username is Vagrant, V-A-G-R-A-N-T. That's who I am right now. That's who you'll be in your class dev box. Um, and, and your home directory will be slash home slash Vagrant. So if you want to do LS, um, that'll give you a directory listing, right? Um, so commands from the Unix command line take what are known as flags. So um, actually, uh, all flags are with a single dash. Uh, the, actually, there's two kinds of flags with a single dash or with, with a double dash. Um, I'll just show these two real quickly. So there's a dash A flag that means show all the files and a dash L flag, which means shows a long listing. So let me just show that one first. So if you do that, uh, instead of just listing the files, uh, you'll get each file on a single line with some extra information, permissions and the owner and the data was created and stuff like that. Um, so dash H will give you stuff in human readable format. So uh, instead of this 4096, it'll, it'll give you sizes of files um, in kilobytes or megabytes or, or gigabytes uh, if you have really big files or things like that. Um, and there are hidden files. So, so, you know, this is the same as on Windows and things. Um, um, so files that have a dot in front of them are considered uh, like um, config files or, or uh, are hidden usually. So normal usage, you often don't want to see those. But, it, but if you do need to see those, you can add the dash A to see all files, including these kinds of hidden ones. So, um, you know, you have to understand the idea of the current directory. So if I want to, ch if I want to change my current working directory, I can use the cd command. So in particular, uh, in order to run these, these commands to build your assignments and submit them and things, you need to change into your repos directory. Um, and, and your directory can actually be a path instead of a single directory. So uh, in one command, I can change into repos and then from there change into the COSC 
two, three, six, um, you know, your, your repo directory, okay? Oh, by the way, just as a little hint, um, <coughs> my, 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 my screen key here isn't really showing the tabs, but if you enter a partial directory name or file name and hit tab, uh, if there's only one possible completion, it'll complete it out for you. So, I, so what I was doing there was, was just typing in the first two characters of the directory name and hitting tab. So this was the, the tab character, and it completed the, the directory for me. Okay. So that, that changed my directory into here, right? And, and, uh, and my prompt, by, by default, your prompt for these terminals is set up to, to display what your current working directory is. So I won't go through any others. You can um, remove files and copy files, and you can make directories and remove directories and things like that. Um, maybe I will do one more. So um, 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 I often, since I use ls a lot, I often make an alias for ls for for ls called d for directory equals. Um, I like to do a long listing and have human readable. So ls dash lh. Um, so uh, oops, it's a l i a s. So. so once you have an alias, it's just like a you know like a, a, another name. So, so now every time I hit, I type in d, it'll run this command, right? So this will give me a long listing of all my files in here. Um, so for example, if, if I want to display the contents of a file like that file that I copied from my host machine, uh, excuse me, I could do like a cat. Cat stands for concatenate. So this will concatenate or basically output the contents of the file to my terminal, to, to standard output. Okay, uh, Or maybe a better way to look at files from the command line. I mean, you can always open it up in an editor, for example, right? So I can always go to my repository and um, um, like a double, if you double click on this file, it probably doesn't have any um, um, application associated with it, so it won't know what to do. Well, it did, so in this case, it, it did open up uh, like a, a basic text editor, so that was the same file, but sometimes it might not know what to do with a file, right, depending on the file extension. So, again, most of this is similar to, is the same as you'll have in any operating system um, with some of the details being changed, so. So I, I can look at the contents of a file from a terminal using the less command. So from the less command, it's a pager. So I can use the up arrow key and the down arrow key if, if the file takes up more than one screen full of information. Or you can use page up and page down. And when you're ready to exit, you can just hit a Q. And that will quit you out of there. All right? Uh, but yeah, let's move on. So the, the, the main thing I wanted to show in this video, um, I want to show you the basics of building um, your assignments uh, and your projects from the command line, okay? So we're using a basic make uh, build system to, to build uh, your code in these dev boxes that I give you for assignments uh, and things for your class. So you can do all this from the command line, although uh, we'll also set up so you can do some or all these things inside of your editors as well, okay? But you can build your projects and test them and debug them and, and so on, okay? Let's go to my example project. So, um, uh, again, doing a directory listing D, um, all of the assignments for this particular class are in the assignment subdirectory, so I can change directory into there. Um, and, you know, we've got, at this point, we've got 12 assignments right now, and I've got an example assignment. So in another video, I'll show more about this example assignment. But we can change to that and look at our files. So, again, you know, you can use your file browser to get the same information. So. Um, I am currently in my repository under the assignments under the example one subdirectory. So we could look in there. Um, so I go to my repository, um, assignments, example one. So, so those are the same files, right? And, you know, if we wanted to, you know, we could open these files up in an editor or I could, I could look at them from the command line. Let's say I want to look at the contents of the main that cpp source file, so I can use less again to look at it, or let's see here, um, a bigger file. The biggest one I have is the experiment one, one tests, or the example one tests here. So this, this file is bigger than can fit in one page, so I can use the up arrow and down care arrow, or the page up and page down to, to scroll through this, and then I can queue out when I'm done here. 
So let's look at the um, um, these build commands. All right. So um, you can get a, uh, this isn't a normal thing you can do with make, but um, I've got these make files set up so you can get a list of all what are known as the targets, the valid targets um, that you can make a project with. So you can make test and make debug and make run and make beautify. By default, if you do make and you don't specify what's known as a target, so just make by itself, it'll perform the make all by default. And what make all does is it builds your test executable and your debug executable, okay? So right now there's only some source code files, CPP files, and header files, HPP files, uh, in this project. So if I do a make, um, it will start compiling things. So it's going to compile this file into a, what's known as an object file. Um, and it will compile then the example one tests, I think, will, uh, and that's what's compiling right now. And then it will compile the example one's um, functions, that CPP file, into an object file, and then it will create um, a test. So, so now it's actually creating the executable. So the name of this executable is test, and, and, and like I said, make all builds both of these targets. So it builds both the test executable and the debug executable, okay? So I'll talk more about that um, in uh, the next video probably a bit, right? So, But um, you can run the unit test using the test executable, um, and you can use the debug executable to, to run a debugger and, and debug your projects and your code. So. Um, so you can use a make, so, so right now if you do a directory list and you'll see that we've got the, the executable debug and the executable test, um, and we've got these .o file, uh, uh, files, these .object files. So if, if you want to, uh, if you want to make your project get back to a clean state, you can make do a make clean. This will just delete anything that can be remade from the source file. So it won't delete the source files, of course, um, but, but anything that could be re remade like these .object files, um, and the test and the debug executable will be deleted. So we actually ran an rm, that's a remove command, to remove test and debug, um, and star.o removes all the .object files. So, so this object file and this object file, right? So now if we look, we're, we're back to our state before we built anything, only with the source files um, in our directory again, right? So, so like I showed over here, you, you can build those things individually. So if I wanted to, I could just, just make the test executable, right? Um, and, and this will build, uh, this is basically using a unit test framework called catch.hpp. Again, I'll probably talk more about that um, in the next video that you're supposed to watch after this one where I, I show how you actually do things in, in this example project here. So, so there we built our test file um, and you can do make debug. Uh, building stuff with the catch framework takes a little bit of time. So whenever you build the test executable, it, it, it often takes a little time. You saw the debug was, was a bit faster, right? Um, you can actually run these by, by, by invoking them, but um, it's not set up by default to have my current directory in my path. So if you ask to, if you run test, it'll seem like it does nothing because there's actually um, um, an executable called test, but it lives in user bin, okay? So if you want to actually run this test in, in my directory right here, right? So I've got an executable called test. If I want to actually run that one, I can specify the full, uh, an, a, a relative path to the test. So by saying dot slash test, it'll actually run the, the test executable in this current directory, in, in my example 01 directory, all right? So that's, that, what, that runs what are known as the unit tests, uh, the unit test framework uh, here, all right? So in this case, all the tests are passing um, as I gave it to you um, in this example project, okay? <coughs> um, you can also run those unit tests using make run Make run uh, will actually, if it needs to, it will first rebuild the, the test executable, and then it will just uh, run the tests, okay? Um, so like I said, there'll be more about using these unit tests and what these are all about uh, in, in another video, all right? There's a few other tests that, that we've, uh, tasks that we've, that, that I'll just mention real, right now. So you can run make beautify 
This runs what's known as a co code formatter. Okay, so we've got a set of style guidelines, and we're using um, a program called Uncrustify to enforce these style guidelines. So basically what this does is it parses all the source files in the directory, um, and it, cha it modifies them. So if, if there's anything like tabs aren't correct or spacing, um, and there's lots of other style guidelines that it enforces. Um, so, so this will format, reformat, uh, rebeautify your um, code to conform to our class style guidelines. Okay. There's also a make docs. Um, so you'll see some examples of, of source code documentation in this class. So there's a requirement in this class that you um, that you, for example, provide doc function documentation, source code documentation for all functions um, that we do in this class. So. So when you run this, uh, you'll see some warnings about if, if you have stuff that's not documented that should maybe be documented, um, it'll tell you, right? So, um, oh, the, re the result of that, if you're curious, when you make docs, um, um, you can look at it if you want to. There, there, there's now two, file, two directories in my example one directory called HTML and LaTeX, uh, LaTeX. Um, so if you look in the HTML, uh, it actually built um, uh, uh, an HTML version of my code documentation. So you can double click on that to browse it, to browse the HTML files and, and, and these other things from a, um, um, it's probably the Firefox browser by default uh, will um, open up here um, if we bring that up. Um, So yeah, it should bring there. It is. So it should bring some stuff up by default on the main page. It was just, uh, or maybe not. So maybe maybe you have to look at the files list here. But um, but anyway, you can look through that. So, so there's some documentation for different things like what's in the example one test uh, CPP or um, or what's in the example one functions CPP. Um, so. Um, All right, so that was that was the make uh, docs. Uh, the final one um, that I should let's, let's go ahead and clean that up. Make clean. Um, so for the assignments for this class, you're required to submit them into it using a particular format. All right, so you have to use the make submit command. Okay, so once you do an assignment for this class, you'll want to come to the command line and run make submit. So this will basically uh, combine everything up that it needs to uh, into a, um, a tar.gzip file that you can use, uh, that, that you need to upload to the, our MyLeo online class site for grading, basically, okay? So again, if I do a directory listing here, you'll see there's an example one tar.gz. And, and don't try and, I mean, this is the command that was actually run, but don't, don't try and run this by hand yourself. So, so don't be doing like a tar command yourself if, if you know how to do a tar and a gzip. Um, because each assignment might have some particular differences on what needs to be put into the submission package that you're supposed to upload, okay? So anyway, but once you once you upload or, or once you create the the submission, um, um, you know again, I mean this is in the example one directory. So I mean you can either use Firefox on your guest virtual box to, to log into my Leo online and um, upload that file, or you know remember you know this whole directory um, uh, here and all the subdirectories under it are shared with your host machine. So you can also just use your Firefox browser, uh, you know, on your Windows host or, or Mac OS host um, to browse to your repository directory, you know, assignments, um, the X1, and then, then you'll be able to access the, 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 the submission file from there and upload it through Fire, Firefox in your host. Either way, right? So, um, Okay, but those are those are kind of real quickly the the basic commands that you need to know, right? So so for most of the editors that, that we have, you can do some or all these inside the editor as well. So I'll show that in the next video. Uh, but but you ought to be able to do these from the command line. You know to use the basic build system, you know to remake your code, um, to remake your unit tests, and then to run your unit tests uh, and see if they're passing or not. All right. 
Um, all right, so yeah, I think we went through all those, including our class assignment submission. Okay, so that's it for this video. Um, I hope that that was some uh, useful information for you, and I shall see you then all in the next video.